Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. To the Long Road. I'm your host, Chris Roberts. <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll go a, a couple of things, and um, the first thing is I'm going to talk about is Donald Trump's um, trial, and basically. After reading yesterday's um, transcript and things that were going on, okay, it is really a political um, grandstanding um, show um, because the trial should be plain and simple. Did Donald Trump or get pay or authorize someone to pay Stormy Daniels $140,000 not to say anything about whether she or he had sex together and then in turn use that $140,000 payment if it happened <clears throat> and wrote her off as a business expense <clears throat> So he would not have to pay taxes on $140,000 quote of um, profit. Plain and simple, so what we're looking at is, we're looking at about $30,000 to $35,000 of possible taxes that Donald Trump owes to combinations of state of New Hampshire, uh, state of New York and the federal government. Okay, <clears throat> that's the question. <clears throat> okay, I don't care, and I don't see how it pertains to the trial with Stormy Daniels saying, hey, Mr. Trump, I want you to wear a condom, and Mr. Trump arguing he doesn't wear condoms and going back and forth, okay? What does a condom having to do with this trial? What does Stormy Daniels saying, oh, I laid on my bed looking up the ceiling and basically kind of drifted away and it was over one real quickly and I bent down and put my nice high heel shoes on. Again, what does that have to do with the fact or the question, the question of fact that's in there, did he or did he not pay $140,000 or have someone such as his lawyer or someone else pay her $140,000 to keep him out shut. Okay? All Stormy Daniels saying is that, oh, basically I went to the room with Donald Trump was because he told me he could advance my career and possibly give me a shot on, by giving me a, sh a slot on the American, I mean, the, um, the Donald Trump's apprentice program. Okay. In that case, it's not kind of really a financial deal. It's a prid pro quo. Then she gets upset. She doesn't get the prid pro quo. She talks about the second time and didn't 
of meeting Donald Trump and didn't get and how she felt that she was kind of um, used by Donald Trump. Okay. Those details and a lot of the other details that are coming out to me, my personal opinion, looking at it, the goal is really not to convict Donald Trump. The goal is to damage Donald Trump as much as possible in front of um, possible November voters. And President Biden came out and with some of the jokes that he's cracking, he's showing that he's not stay, not ha taking the higher ground. And he possibly, when they go low, you go lower type of um, moments. <clears throat> when it comes to politics and political appoint appointments, anybody who studies history is in a lot of cases to get a judgeship, to get to be a postmaster, whole bunch of these other ones. It's a pre pro quo. It's who do you know? Okay, you can have the reputation as the best and most ethical attorney around. But if some senator or some um, governor or representative is not going to put a good word in for you, you do not have any chance of being be appointed to the core or these positions. <clears throat> hey. I know a guy um, who was an elected official. It was found out that um, he had cheated on some um, coursework and was on his way to becoming a lawyer. He ended up um, dropping out of um, politics and later on, even though with his known history and history that he confessed to, he was still appointed to a pretty powerful position. It happens, okay? And so, <clears throat> to me, hey, I'm gonna tell you right up front, I'm not gonna vote for Donald Trump. I don't like Donald Trump as a person. I don't like Donald Trump, I just don't. I don't agree with his values or lack of values. I don't agree with his lack of integrity. I don't agree with the way he treats people because he's like to use people and he's gotten really far along by um, using people, buying up companies, putting his name on and getting out bef and getting people to join in and getting out before the company goes bankrupt. To me, the individual has no leadership. He does it by force and the fact that he has money and he knows how to play the game extremely well and surround himself with a lot of patsies, okay? But I have a very serious problem of way the way a judicial system well the judicial system in the state of New York is um, being used to me in a political manner, not a legal manner, because like I said, the question is, did Donald Trump pay this woman $140,000 or had someone pay this woman up to $140,000 to keep him out shut? about them possibly having sex. And so far, the way the trial is going, 
Um, I think the judge has not kept the trial on um, track. Plain and simple. And they're asking other people about Donald Trump. And so we'd be making, it's like saying, well, Donald Trump not only paid $140,000, but he told all these people that he paid $140,000 to keep her... Um, to keep her quiet. I was um, trying to be my best to be careful. I was going to say something and then it, I go, eh, that would probably kind of come across as inappropriate or different ways that people may take it. But to quote unquote, to buy her silence. Okay, bringing the National Enquirer in, um, <clears throat> paying the National Enquirer money or whatever to not say anything. Okay, that happens an awful lot of times. <clears throat> and as we all know, <clears throat> a lot of... Um, stories that the National Enquirer runs doesn't prove to be very accurate. <clears throat> and some of them turn to be out and out misrepresentations. You can't use the word lying, but misrepresentations. And so, yeah, <clears throat> you do that to, again, if you're an intelligent person, a smart person, situation-aware person, you don't put yourself in those situations that you have to try to buy your way out of them, even if you're not guilty. <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of um, lawyers who go out to sue people no, I'm fully aware that the um, that client's case is extremely weak, but the company has made um, <clears throat> a decision that it was best just to settle than to do to the expense of a trial. It's not like in England where the loser has to pay. And so, guy get no risk, high reward. For example, in the city, we should still have it, but I know we used to have at least, they had $10, um, $2,500 um, ability to write $2,500 checks each year. So basically, if you came to the city and you were going to sue the city, and for example, we had an individual who was suing the city because um, one of the properties flooded with backed up sewage, and the individual was saying it was the city's fault, and the city basically said, okay, Here's $2,500 to pay for the cleanup and all this other kind of stuff and done and over with. If the person said no, then it goes, okay, here's our insurance company. You work it out with the insurance company. You get your lawyer and you and your lawyer will work it out with the insurance company. I know the other individual, there was a backup in the, um, the sewer line, went to the, um, the city. The city gave the individual one of the $2,500 um, checks and went to, um, and that ended that. So the, that claim was done and over with. And later on, while the pipe was being repaired, it was found out it wasn't the city's fault. It was that whoever put the individual's pipe in had put it in um, backwards, the hub leaked, and um, caused the pipe to collapse. 
then you could argue saying, well, you know what? Why the city pay 2,500 bucks? Because the city was going to have to pay or the insurance company was going to have to pay more than 2,500 bucks if it went to court. Even if they won, it was going to pay more than 2,500 bucks. So the insurance company says, you know what, King, if you can handle and you can get 10 of these dismissed, we have no problem whatsoever. So that happens. Companies do that. New people go to newspapers that do that. Or you run my story or you run that story. I'm pulling my advertisement. So what we have right now is I don't think we're having a real trial in New York. I think what we're having in New York, New York is reality TV. I think people enjoy being on the nightly news, whatever. I think the judge is making, he's, he's feeling important. He may feel that he should be getting a higher judgeship after this. Maybe the governor of New York will say, hey, you know what, we think this individual should be um, rewarded. And it's really strange. New York is not going to vote for Donald Trump. Not at all. There's no way in the world New York is going to vote for Donald Trump. And things like this can be handled in, in civil trial, all the work. Or the, um, the, the tax revenue service could have said, no, nope, we disallow this unless you can prove that this was a valued expense and this is what you're going to have to pay. But no, I believe this is um, a political thing. I think it's going to cause damage. It's going to cause Americans to lose even more faith in the legal system, in the political system. They're going to view, it's going to con cause more of these deep state theories. It's going to cause all these different things. It's, and it's going to result in more fake news, all this stuff. And... Um, as they like to say, every time you cross the Rubicon, there is no going back. It just means the next Rubicon is going to be even worse with worse consequences. And um, people need to really study history on their own. They have to stop listening to what other people do and but that's what's happening that's my um, my opinion on um, like I said I don't like Donald Trump as a person and maybe he did it maybe he didn't but if he did he's far from being the first and he'll far from being the last and what other people are learning from this trial is um, how not to do it. And me, hey, I could have wrote 140, if I had the money, I could have wrote a $140,000 um, check. First, I wouldn't have done it in check. I would have found a way that was non check hundred and forty thousand dollars in Bitcoin no one would have known where it came from and the question is you know what I wouldn't have taken it off I would not route a hundred and forty thousand dollar expense hey if you're a billionaire a hundred and forty thousand dollars is round up numbers that's chump change over a course of a year or like other politics, politicians do. Hey, um, John, I know you're going to pay $140,000 for that plate dinner or this or that. 
Hey, can you have someone take one of your guys or people and keep her quiet? Give her, she wants 140. Can you take care of it? Between, and I'll find ways to get it back to you later. Hey, no problem, Don. I owe you one anyway. That's the, the way it works. You don't want to think it works that that's the way it works. That's the way it had been working for a long, long time. And if President Trump, Vice President, <clears throat> former President Trump is guilty of what he accused of, he would have to be one of the dumbest people, dumbest politicians around. You don't do that. But the question is, he did have a, pro, a really questionable, sneaky lawyer. Was that lawyer the only one that wanted to work for him? None of the other lawyers wanted to work for him because he said, well, the former president is way too shady and I don't want to risk my license and stuff. So there's a heck of a lot going on, but there's a heck of a lot doesn't seem to add up. I would like to think that anybody who's president or form, who has been president of the United States would not be that naive to make a real stupid decision like that. But who knows? That's up in the, in the hands of 12 individuals. <clears throat> and as soon as uh, the decision is made, there's no doubt that's going to um, be some appeals and stuff. And it could end up going right to the um, Supreme Court. And and what thing you don't throw the guy in jail while you're waiting all his appeals on a, a small case like that, unless you really want to cause some serious trouble nationwide. Going in <clears throat> is why someone in New York <clears throat> would go to jail over $140,000 where some people have been guilty of sexual assault and other serious problems were released on very low bail. So New York has really got itself in um, a quandrum. Again, like I said, I'm stating this because I feel it's extremely important that the American people have trust in their legal system. We all know that we have the best legal system that money can buy, but let's not make it so obvious that American people <clears throat> just give up. When I was in California, I saw people plead guilty to crimes that they never committed. <clears throat> I remember being in Judge Shaw's courtroom in Orange County, in Southern California, in Newport, and people up there, and he goes, you're guilty, okay? And if you plead guilty, this is what I'm gonna give. If you found guilty, you're going to the farm. But if you plead guilty, I'll give you three years probation and I'll give you 30 days in the orange suit so you get to work, you get to go home, but for the next 15 weeks, you're going to be in the orange suit picking up trash along the highway. So, bingo, you're going to pick the um, public defender to help you? But the public defender wants to get a job in the system. So almost everybody was found guilty who had the public defender. So in the innocent people were being, were pleading guilty and you can't appeal a guilty plead 
And so, hey, what could you do? And the fact that there were misdemeanors and you could be spent up to a year in the county farm and, New, and California, the way to save money, there was no re court reporter in there. So how could you appeal if there was no trial transcript? That's the way it is. And if you feel that you're, that causes serious problems, serious government problems, if people can't feel at least they have somewhat of an honest break. There was over 70 million people that voted for Donald Trump, and a lot of them believe that's what's happening right now. And so, <clears throat> bingo. Okay. Every week when I'm researching stuff to figure what I'm going to put on the show, and I research deep, and I sometimes go to Library of Congress, I go to other places, and too many times what I find out was... Um, <clears throat> what I thought I was knowing, knew, turned out to be wrong, or the reason I, um, <clears throat> I thought something was correct was wrong. And what I started out was the school's there's places in New York City that are saying is, you know what, too many Asian kids are um, getting to these selective schools that are schools that you can only test in. So we gotta eliminate the test. Virginia, I think it was Alexandra Fairfax, Virginia did that. Seattle, where up in Washington and Oregon basically Asians are no longer people of color. Asians are now white people because what they've determined is if you score above white people on in the school system, you can no longer be considered a minority. And I kept going, I'm going, and so Los Angeles and some of the other ones in California are saying, you know what? We're not going to let 7th and 8th graders take um, Algebra 1. You know, because if you take Algebra 1 in 8th grade, Geometry in ninth grade, Algebra 2 in 10th grade, that means you get to take Calculus and Physics and Trigonometry. And so if a minority student can't do this, that means... Um, if they don't take they don't take algebra one until tenth grade, all they can take is geometry and algebra two, and they're behind. Or if these other kids go Asian kids, for example, go in and take these, it isn't fair. The black kids can't get in. The Hispanic kids can't get in. So. And that results in um, a lifelong economic um, disability. And so they would say, you know what? They're discriminating, a public education system is discriminating against um, black and Hispanic kids. So <clears throat> I go, as I was doing some of the, the research, <clears throat> like for example, I'm going, I went to New York City. New York City has almost a million students, okay? You know that only 64% of the teachers in New York City are certified have the certification, meet the state of New York's requirement for certification. 
and only less than 70% of the teachers in the state of, um, no, yeah, less than 70% of the teachers who have been teaching in this New York City have been teaching for more than three years or more. So 30% of the teachers in New York City have been teaching for less than three, they've been teaching for less than three years. So they've only spent two years, at the most two years in the classroom. And a bunch of those teachers are not even certified to be teachers. And a number of the teachers who've been teaching more than three years are not certified to be teachers. And so what happened when I looked at that, basically 56% of the students in New York City, basically with almost 600, no, I'll say we'll round it off, 550,000 students in New York City qualify for free or reduced lunch. More than one out of every two kids are free and reduced lunch. 8% of them are, are learning English. Engli English language learners, 8%. And I kept, I kept going, I'm looking, and what I found surprising is 41% of the students in New York City are Hispanic. 24% are black, 16% are Asian, and 14% are white. So, not too many white kids in the um, <clears throat> New York school system. And what it stated was that 66% um, of the high school graduates in New York we're reading at 12th grade level with proficiency or higher and only 35% were um, proficient or higher in um, math. And I'm going, wow. But then I looked in deep dive because to get a diploma in Massachusetts, I mean New York, you have to go and get um, you gotta pass the test. So when I looked at the high school grads and graduate rate, and this number is quite different from when most of us were in school and stuff, <clears throat> they have finagled ways to um, <clears throat> get the numbers. Like for New, New Hampshire, it used to be, you gotta stay in school until you're 16. So they passed the law saying you were school until you're 18. Well, if you're in school until you're 18, why not just graduate them? Give them easy foundation courses or whatever to get them. So like for example, Keene, we now have like other schools, different levels of um, diploma. You can get one as low as 20 credits. So, if you spend your four years there, you don't get in too much trouble. You breathe. You can get a 20 um, credit diploma. Or if you do really good and you want to work hard, you can get a 28 credit diploma. Well, the difference between bottom diploma, high diploma, that's eight different courses, extra courses over your four years. So when I looked at them, 92% of the kids, of Asian kids graduate. 80% of black, 80% of Hispanic, 87% of mixed race kids, and basically 90% of white kids. That's what um, graduates. <clears throat> so in the last couple of years, the numbers, you have the New York Regency exam 
where you got to pass your class. So if you get 65 in your class and you pass five exams, you get a reading seat diploma. Okay, for example, you got to take an English exam. You get to take either history or global history and geography. And math, you get to take either Algebra 1, Geometry, or Algebra 2 exam. Guess which exam I'm going to take? In science, I get to take um, Living Environment, Chemistry, Earth Science, Physics. Guess what two exams I'm not going to take? And if I want, I could take a world language. But, or they have some special options over here that I can take one of the special options. But due to COVID, so 21, 22, and 23, you had to get a 65 on your Regency exam. So they go, well, you know, that really, you know, COVID was kind of rough on the people. So he said, you know that 65? All you have to do is get a 55. We're going to give you a 10-point credit <clears throat> for just showing up with a pencil in your hand because of COVID. And what did that do? So for the 2023 class, Regency exam. 99.9 .9 for Asians, 99.4 for Black, 99.6 for Hispanic, 99.9 .9 for Miss Race, and 98.9 .9 for White people. So, basically last year, if you got a 55 on the exam, you were given credit as a passing for the exam. Okay, so you really, really had to be under, excuse me, under education, under educated, or not give a damn about the test, and just went like this to fail the test. Even while black students had the worst, only six. Tenth of 1% of the black students fail the, to pass four or more of the Regency exams. <clears throat> but, you know what? If you had a special ed IEP plan or on a 504 plan, We lowered it. All you would have to do was get a 52. Nothing like talking to the students. I got an IEP. We're going to teach you. And then you're going to get a diploma. You're going to be able to go out to work. And you're going to be able to go to the employer and say, hey, I got my Regency diploma and you got to hire me because I made the requirements. I had a girl in my class when I was teaching. When I, I didn't know about IEPs and I was teaching and she was doing really well. She was getting C's and everything. And then the special ed teacher says, oh, yeah, I'm not using the IEP. And so, for example, I teach in English. You had 20 words. If you used all 20 words correctly in a sentence, in there with correct meaning, you get a 65. I don't care if you spelt all 20 wrong, I gave you 65 because that meant you can communicate and you can communicate. And you know what? There's a spell check. You can voice the stuff right to the computer and they'll fix it, but you gotta be able to vocally communicate. And so the special, I said, no, no, no. She gets to pick what 10 words that she wants. 
And of those 10 words, she will get to pick which five that you'll correct. I said, okay, that's it. And I gave her a C because she got four out of five right. Especially when teacher comes back and says, what are you doing? I said, she only got four. Hey, you gotta give her a B or an A. So if she gets five, I said, she gets five out of five right, she gets an A, and I have another student to get 17 out of 20 right, that student has to get a lower grade. Yep, that's the way the plan's written up. Well, that young lady was to graduate out of the high school that I taught with, with high honors and all this other kind of stuff. So she felt really good, her parents felt really good until she took that diploma and went out to get a job in the places that she went and says, I don't care about your diploma. I don't care if you got high honors. I care if you can fill out this job application. You can't even read the questions I'm asking. You can't even spell words correctly. You can't follow instructions. In a great school system, we call our school system, screwed that young lady over and damaged her for the rest of her life. Because we could have taught her to be able to, <clears throat> you know what? <clears throat> she could have got a job. She could have got a meaningful job that would have made her <clears throat> feel productive, made her feel worthwhile. But no, we had the administrators happy. But the girl was screwed over for some administrator that was going to take $100,000 a year home while she couldn't even get a job. Okay? So that's what the state of city of New York does. You know what? This is, if you get 55, you're automatically going to pass. You get 55, 64, you're automatically going to get a diploma. If you get 52 to 45, um, 52 to 54, all you have to go do is back to the teacher and the teacher give you a recommendation then you can get your Regency Diploma. Uh, wait a minute. I just gave you an 80 in my class, a B in my class. You got a 52 on the state exam. And I'm going to refuse to give you a recommendation? Uh, no. Because that's going to look me stupid because I gave you a B. And I don't want to put up with the bull crap from the principal. So, yeah, I'm going to give you the recommendation. I got standard recommendations that I just fill in names over here. But, you know what? Even if you score in the, um, <clears throat> in the 40s, hey, and, you, and you're on an IEP? <clears throat> or 504, <clears throat> if the superintendent writes you a positive letter, you get the Regency Diploma. The school district looks really good, but the child screwed over. What a system. So, on the Regency exam, they have an advanced regency where you have to take at least nine additional exams. And that's chemistry, and that's algebra one, two, and three. I mean, algebra, plain geometry, chemistry. You have to do a world language. You have to take physics. You've got to take all these plus other ones that are on the list. Or you can use AP class, like 
um, American history, world history. If you get a three or above on the AP, you get it goes on. Fifty three percent of the Asian students that graduated took the advanced regency test. Out of those fifty three percent, fifty almost fifty eight percent passed at least nine exams got high enough and got past these exams for the black students where um, 99.4 percent of them um, took the um, <clears throat> past the regency 11 and a half percent of that 99 took the um, advanced Regency exam. 14% passed. Hispanics, almost 19% took the advanced Regency. 23% passed. Multiple race, over 32% took it. And 37% passed. White, 41% took it. And 46% passed. Well, for the ones who took the um, and passed the advanced regency, they got some serious tuition breaks if they enrolled in the state of New York's um, college system. But you know what? We have people that says that isn't fair. We're not being fair because only 14% of um, the 11% who took it passed. But 57% of Asians passed. So we got to find a way to hold back the Asians. And so there was one individual just recently that scored extremely high and should have been able to get placed in any school he wanted in New York City, but he was of the wrong um, color and ethnicity. Here's a couple of things that um, Asian, okay? India is considered an Asian country. I don't know why, it's really a subcontinent and it really isn't Asian. South Korea is an Asian country. Japan is an Asian country. China is an Asian country. Okay? When we let <clears throat> Chinese or South Korean or Japanese or Indian immigrants into our country, a lot of them are very highly educated. They come in on visas, work visas, come on medical, you get to see them as dentists, doctors, engineers. And when they bring their kids or having kids, they're not going to let their kids slack off. They're not going to let their kids play Call of Duty while they're in college or while they're in high school, blowing money and not getting good grades. South Korea, you go to school, and people, parents send their kids to school on weekends. <clears throat> Japan, same way. The kids go to school by the time a Japanese kid graduates from high school, he or she has spent four more, the equivalent of four extra years in school compared to an American kid. My grandson's wife is Japanese. She went to school, and on weekends she went to English school, and she speaks better English than a lot of American students and Americans that I know. Okay, then they sent her to Canada also to go to some more school. <clears throat> Chinese, China, the same way. But um, India, Ch 
China, South Korea, Japan, the chances of getting into a good college because mom or dad has money like the Varsity Blues are pretty slim. You have national exams and you gotta get a certain level on each of these exams, certain exams on these exams to get into certain schools. Is there some hanky-panky? Yes, there's always hanky-panky. Money buys things. But one of the things money also buys in South Korea, in India, in Japan, in China, is access to better quality teachers and outside tutors. <clears throat> And so we've set up some stuff that goes, I just shake um, my head at because we're really screwing over a lot of these kids. <clears throat> and if you go back and study um, the education in America, it was pretty simple. Only the elite got to get ed educated. If you're in the top 20, you get educated. If <clears throat> basically everyone else was basically educated to go to work. We had a system that was going to educate our kids so businesses would not have to pay to educate them. So we Educate them enough so they know basic math, can follow basic instructions, and they knew how to behave. That's what we did. And um, when they got up to a certain level, we just bought waves and waves of immigrants in. Whether they were Irish, they were Romanian, they were Chinese, all over the country. If you go to national parks and stuff, I went to... Um, Rocky Mountain National Park. There's a dam that was built by Portuguese and Romanians. We had people that we went in and bought people overseas. Okay. Most of the people that went into World War II were four to sixth grade education. Bingo. But what happened was in 1945 with the GI Bill, we decided that, hey, we were going to educate our kids and we sent them to finish high school, we sent them to trade school, we sent them to college. Then Russia put Spetsnik up in the air and then we went for science and then we had a bunch of scholarships and national defense loans and stuff. And that went to 1973 and then the American businesses reverted back to pre-World War II. Instead of bringing the immigrants in, we went where the immigrants were. We went to China, we went to these places, and we went to Japan, and we started having them produce stuff at a very cheap price, and we no longer had a need to provide a quality education to Americans. And the quality of our education since 1973 has gone down. Every time our SAT scores and other scores go down, we recalibrate them back up. It goes, you hear, it goes down, oh, we recalibrate. Here. So while you may have needed 700 now, to get a 1400, now you may only need a 600 to get a 1400 because we just like to recalibrate over and over again. And so there's a bunch of stuff that um, <clears throat> I saw and I was looking in, but it's all over the place. I'm going to save it for my next show and I'm going to make some slides and everything that will pop up and I think that it um, would be extremely helpful and 
But here's one I got the last two minutes. I couldn't understand why cities like New York and Chicago and Houston and some of the other ones <clears throat> were taking all these migrant um, war migrants in. I said, it doesn't make sense. They got black mayors and um, what about the black black voters and all this other kind of stuff? And there it was. This was one of the things I learned that I was digging deep. New York City, Mayor Adams, very self-centered, selfish guy. Do you know that New York City, 41.3% of the people in New York City are Hispanic compared to 24.4% of the people are black? Chicago, 46.5% of the people in Chicago are Hispanic. 35.8% of the people are black. Los Angeles, 74% of the people are Hispanic, 7% black. Houston, 61.8% are Hispanic, and 22.2% are black. You know what? In those four cities, the black voter is irrelevant. And if I want to get elected, I have to get the Hispanic vote. So the black vote, like I said, in those four cities, they're going to lose out to the migrants because the migrants have the voting power in those cities. The blacks in those cities have been played. They have elected black mayors who did not care about them. They cared only about their own reelection. Surprise, surprise. Who would have thought? All you see is a lot of blacks on the radio and T, I mean on the TV, but the blacks are not the majority in any of those four cities. So I'll see you next week and have a good day.